everyone. Welcome to the Seeds of Success podcast, hosted by Dottie San Martin and myself, Orly Rivera. This show is your weekly dose of knowledge, insights, and actionable tips to transform centers into striking successes. Whether you are a seasoned industry professional or just stepping onto the lanes, we've got you covered. Dottie, how are you doing today? Hey, Orly, I'm great. You know, the weather's changing and lots lots of things are happening right now. So Yeah, yeah lots of things are going on. Uh, today, kind of, you know, what we talked about uh, that we wanted to talk about were, you know, sometimes you get that phone call at your center, you know, your business, and they say, I want to do, you know, you're used to doing birthday parties, you're, you're used to doing, you know, kids parties, and all of a sudden someone calls and says, hey, I want to do a corporate party there for maybe Christmas. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they might not be wanting a hundred chili dogs from the snack bar or a hundred burgers <laughs> or a hundred pizza slices. They might say, hey, are you able to do, you know, prime rib? Are you able to do, you know, some kind of, you know, pulled pork or something? You never know. And I think, um, you know, first off, your staff might be like, what? No, we don't do that. We just do, you know, a cheeseburger party or a pizza party. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, when it comes to corporate parties, I guess my biggest question is, are you ready? Are you ready for a corporate party? Um, if, if not, you know, we could help you get there. We're going to try to help you get there today. And yes, you know, um, before just saying no, like I said, maybe your staff before they say no, think about it, see what you can do. And you're going to be, you know, you're going to be pretty pumped about what you can do in your center to offer these corporate parties to people. And they're, they're a big deal. Right. And you know, well, first of all, yes, it is that time of year because here we are, you know, going, we're in fall now and people are going to start getting in that mode that they, you know, and especially um, now, so many companies, so many businesses are struggling um, still to this day with staffing and keeping enough staff. Um, and so at the very least, if they haven't done anything throughout the year, a lot of them are planning to do holiday parties to show their appreciation at the end of the year. <clears throat> And holiday parties are such huge opportunities in a bowling center, family entertainment center, because companies are willing to pay for them, provided you deliver what they're wanting. Right. Yeah. And I think that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, there, there's so much that, um, you know, like I said, you might not think you're ready for it, but once you sit down, make a plan, you can be ready. And it's, it's something great to offer. And, you know, one of the best things of it, and, you know, I might be jumping the gun again this part early, but you got to think about it. If somebody's bringing in a hundred staff members, they might not be bringing in their whole family. It might just be that actually, you know, their employees. So that's a hundred employees that you're having come in. That's going to go back home and tell their family about your center. And yeah. This place was awesome. So yeah, um, there's a lot of things. So as far as being ready, I guess one of the main things is, I mean, your food, I brought that up. Somebody might not want a hundred or 200 chili dogs. Um, when it comes to a menu, what would you recommend Dottie that people, how can they come up with that menu for a corporate party? Well, well, first of all, definitely there needs to be a planned corporate menu because companies that are calling in, companies that are dropping by to scope out your place to talk about a, a an event there, they're expecting to have something you know that they can look at and and decide what they want, and even that might spark. Oh well, you know, I see you offer this. Can you do this? Mm -hmm. So um, a good place to start is, first of all, keep an open mind. And, you know, just because you only have certain equipment in your snack bar doesn't always mean you should discount not doing other things. Gosh, the, the food industry has evolved so much. Uh, and I know, um, you know, Cisco, uh, which is a BPAA Smart Buy partner, uh, has all sorts of resources that are available to help you. And I'm sure every other food distributor uh, offers a like service, but I'm familiar with Cisco because Cisco was my distributor for many, many years. And they helped so much uh, by helping me understand with what I have in my, and, and mine was a snack bar, what I had in my snack bar as far as equipment and space what I could do um, efficiently and successfully. You know, you want the food to come out tasting exactly right uh, every single time. And so I use them a lot to help me understand what was possible and what was not possible. I'm in Texas. 
So my center was in Texas. And so, of course, in Texas, there's a couple of things that people expect, barbecue and Mexican food. And so out of a snack bar, um, we were able to provide a barbecue buffet, beans, potato salad, brisket. And it was amazing. Did I have a pit in my kitchen to to smoke the bar the brisket? No, but I reached out to the Cisco, and Cisco had a wonderful product that was fully cooked, certified Angus beef brisket that was amazing. Um, and I was able, and nobody ever knew how easy it was. All we did is warm it up, yeah. but it was amazing. It wasn't the cheapest, but if the company is getting what they want and they're getting a quality product. Again, they don't mind paying for it. You're delivering on what you've promised. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's another, a good way to do it. Yeah. Another thing you could do and make sure to do is, you know, I mentioned to you before we had oh. a employee, Robert, um, and he was, he oh. was a form. I mean, he had been a chef for years. So ask your staff, Hey, you know, someone wants to do a corporate party, ask your kitchen, oh. your kitchen staff, Hey, you know, have you ever did a corporate party? Have you ever catered before? Because they might not, I mean, they may know how to do this. This may have been something that they've did before. So for instance, like I said, Robert was like all about it. We were like, you know, he's making yeah. burgers for us and stuff, but he's used to that, those big corporate parties, the catering. So he was excited. He was like, oh yeah, we can do this and we can do that. You know, you can get the tablecloths from, you know, your, your, I forget what you call that. Uh, you know, the people that bring your carpets, your rugs and your, you know, your, yeah, your linen service. Yeah. He knew all about it. So reach out to your staff, mm -hmm. ask them, they might know uh, more than you think about when it comes to catering a party. And, and speaking of tablecloths, not only, you know, if you're used to doing, you know, your chili dogs and all that, and you're going to do this big corporate dinner, you got to think about presentation too. Oh, that's huge. Absolutely. So, you know, presentation as far as how you're going to plate things, um, and, and you touched on something. I want to go back real quick and talk a little bit about that. If you have a linen service, it's providing like your mechanic uniforms or your rugs or your mops or whatever. Remember that they do offer cloths and napkins and things along those lines. So you're not, you know, you don't have to purchase all of these things. Some uh, events that come in want actual, you know, something besides a, a cardboard boat, right? They, they want something other than a paper plate, right? So there are places that you can rent the, the, you know, the silverware or the, the dishes or whatever. Even and the there's coats. also some, if your place is yeah. wear chef coats, you could get those from those places too. You know, if you want them to, you know, some of the cooks are probably like, Oh, you know, no one ever sees me. You know, I don't know how every kitchen, every kitchen's probably different, but you know, dress them up, spruce them up with some nice chef coats and let them bring out the food. You know, that's going to be exciting for them. Yeah. And even if you uh, like as far as presentation, there's some really nice disposable. It looks like China. Right. And it mm -hmm. looks like silverware, but it's all disposable. That's readily available. I mean, you can get it a lot of different places. And again, all these things that you're doing, you're not expecting to expect it to just, you know, absorb the cost. All of this goes into your corporate pricing that you have. So. Um, you know, that's really, really important. So, you know, so the food is a big part of corporate uh, and you want people to come into your center and not only, um, you know, uh, use the lanes and all of the other uh, activities that you have in your center, but you certainly want to encourage them to eat. And the first step in that is making sure that you have a well thought out, well planned out menu that's available for those events. Yeah, so, that's important to also have when when people are calling in to ask, you know, do you offer corporate parties? Have that under your counter or whatever, you know, in a binder so your staff doesn't say, uh, you might want to call back when my manager's here. They know more about that. You want them to be able to open that up and say, yeah, for corporate parties, we offer, you know, brisket, pulled pork. You know, we could do, you know, potatoes, rice, you know, all these different things. Um, yeah, I, I mean, if, and if you're not doing this yet, don't let this overwhelm you and scare you. Sit down with your cooks come up with a plan, say, Hey, I'm thinking of starting to do corporate parties. You know, what are some ideas that we could do? You know, like I said, they might not, they might know more than you think as far as preparing bigger quantities, you know, cause a party, it might not be easy, easy for one or two cooks to cook 200 burgers. They're going to be like, man, we don't have enough room. We don't, they're not going to come out all at the same time. But if you're offering things that you could cook more in bulk, I guess, you know, like, you know, uh, you know, like pulled pork or beans or rice, like you said, those are all going to be things that are going to help uh, 
help when it comes to those corporate parties. Yes, 100 percent, 100 percent. And, you know, a lot of companies, they really don't realize they don't even consider having a party at a bowling or entertainment venue because it's just not top of mind for them. Yeah. So they're used to, to going to uh, banquet rooms at a hotel. And, you know, you know how that goes. I mean, yeah. you're getting a, a, a menu that uh, isn't always the best and there's no activity. So you have so much more to offer than like a hotel. And those prices, if you don't know what those prices are, call around and get some an idea of it because you will be uh, you will be surprised at what they charge. And you offer even more than that in a family entertainment center. You offer so much more than that. They can have activities, drinks, you know, the whole nine yards. So don't be afraid to price accordingly. But that kind of brings us into the next the next phase of this, you know, since we are in the talking about holiday parties is the a, a bowling center, a family entertainment center can offer an experience. Mm -hmm. And that's what you should strive for is to offer that one stop that completely, I, I want to say immersive experience. And there's a lot of ways that you can immerse the customers into the experience. It, um, but to be able to um, do something other than turning the lanes on and let them bowl. That's yeah. fun. Yes. But that's not an experience. They don't walk away going, oh my gosh, that was so much fun. Yeah. You could come up with ideas, you know, um, you could come up with games to interact with them. You could be involved. You know, it's not just that they're going to, Oh, this party's coming in. They're using our room. They're going to use our lanes. If you're actually kind of hosting the event for them also helping them with that, you know, and you probably have staff members. Again, we always say, ask your staff members or get your staff members involved. You might say, Hey, does anybody want to help host this party? And there might be someone like me that loves to talk, mm -hmm. would love to have a microphone in their hand, you know, and play yeah. games with them. You know, I know you've mentioned the games, fun games, like a, like a, let's make a deal. If you let them mm -hmm. know, hey, you know, during your party, if you like when people are bowling, we could, you know, turn on, turn on our PA and we could do some games with you guys and we could help you with that. If you have a yeah. plan, you know, let them know about that, too, when they call in or when you're discussing, because they might be like, oh, yeah, because we don't know how to entertain people. So. Right. Um, and the, the other thing is you also have people that are coming in that may not be bowling, you yeah. know, that are just there. Maybe it's a spouse that's not, you know, the employee and, and they're watching or whatever. You want that experience to be inclusive of everyone. So you can do, you know, you can do those, like you said, that let's make a deal type, the next person with a hole in their sock or whatever. And trivia, you know, trivia even can include kids. You know, yeah. you can do Disney trivia and stuff like that. And you can leverage your, your employees to come up with those questions. They love, that's a lot of fun for them. But, you know, and, and on the lanes, you know, don't forget, as I said earlier, don't just turn your lanes on and let people bowl. Have a dedicated program that you offer for corporate events. Pull out some of the things that are in your system. If you are a Cubica AMF customer and you have best sex, there are several things that you can pull out of that system and put an entire a party program together on YouTunes is one of my favorites, right? Mm -hmm. For big groups, you can come out. It has the the feature that you can actually have a special animation set of animations for the boss, uh, as well as everybody else that that attends gets to have you, you know their picture in animation that's actually showing up on the screen, and it's a lot of fun. But where else can you go and see the boss in these crazy animations and get to laugh at him and or her and, you know, and, and not like get reprimanded for it. It's a lot of fun. Every, it brings everybody together. Nice thing about something like that within the system is at the end, you can actually do it like a group photo of everybody in their animation and it becomes a memory, right? Something yeah. that they want to share and things like that. But there's a lot of other things just within your scoring system. So don't just turn the lanes on. Have a plan in place. Have a program in place. Rocky yeah. Road Race is another or, you know, there's a lot of ones in the system that you can use. Yeah. And, and one thing I wanted to bring up, too, before, you know, finishing up here is, uh, uh, you know, some staff might not like me after I bring this one up, but expectations of your staff as far as maybe how they're dressed that night, you know? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I would love to be wearing the t-shirt and, you know, and the shorts or whatever. But if it comes to, you know, a, you know, a nicer Christmas party, 
you, you know, management might want the staff to be like, hey, we're all going to wear these black polos or we're all going to wear you know, black jeans or khakis. I don't know. So, you know, that's another thing you might want to look into because if they're bringing the food into this fancy room, you know, you want them to look a little nice. I'm not saying they got to wear a tux or anything, but that might be something that you want to or, you know, at least make sure everybody matches that day. Right. Yes, for sure. And, you know, I, I used to do like a, a little powwow before the event um, to get everybody kind of motivated and excited and to set the proper expectations. But it also gave me an opportunity to look at everybody uh, and make sure that they were, you know, shirts look nice and so on and so forth. I have to throw something out. Um, I have a couple of other things that I want to make sure that we touch base on uh, regarding holiday parties. So, you know, we don't like to say no right off the bat. We like to really think things through. And and nine times out of 10, there is a way that you can accommodate a group um, or at least hear them out. But there are occasions, Orly, that uh, you just can't accommodate them. Or perhaps uh, this company has an affiliation with a, a catering group. Uh, and they would like to have a caterer, their favorite caterer come out. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly that can be accommodated, but uh, you know that you're giving up revenue as a result of that. So <clears throat> you definitely have to have a dollar amount associated with that. So hopefully uh, within your party program that you do have provisions for an outside caterer, but the, you know, here is what um, the expectation is from the center. Uh, So typically it's like a, either a flat rate or a percentage. Um, So, you know, definitely that has to be worked into it because you are not getting that food revenue. So you have to, you know, because you are allowing them to come into your center uh, and do the catering, uh, then you have to, you have to get uh, revenue uh, based on that. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking that made me think of that or made me think of something was, um, you know, I was thrown off for the first time when somebody said, Hey, I want to have a big party there at your center, but we want to shut down. We don't want anybody else there. And I'm like, Oh, I don't know how we would pri- I mean, you know, we were new yeah. to, to the so you got to think about it. if it's a Friday night and you're used to making this much money, but they're taking all your lanes, you got to consider that into your price too. So that's also something you want to maybe having, um, you know, have, have in mind is how much you're right. going to close the place down just for them. Right. That's definitely something to, to um, you, you need to think through. Um, and not only are you, you know, you're, you're booking all the lanes, yes, but you are also closing down for that other revenue, people coming in and eating and leaving or coming in and playing video games or whatever you, you, all that ceases, right? When you close a facility down for a private event and people love private events. So don't be afraid of them be mindful of what it needs to include and, and price it accordingly. And, you know, that, and there is a lot of opportunity for, for private events where they close your center down. Even churches are looking for venues that will do lot like lock-ins. And, and that's a, that's a topic for another, another episode. I understand that, but um, you know, you do when you start thinking through your programs and stuff that you're having, don't discount that you can't do that. Just make sure that you are including the, you know, everything in your pricing. So that leads me to another topic, which is when you are having these corporate events, what are you doing to get these people back into your center? So if you are providing some sort of bounce back to each of the guests, um, certainly I would, um, when you bid this event, you need to bid the dollar amount of the bounce backs that you will be providing and then carry that over as a zero amount. So show them the full amount of that because that adds value to what you're providing. Mm-hmm. So when you get into a, a bidding war with, you know, the bowling center down the street, you can show, yeah, but I'm providing each one of these guests, you know, a bounce back to come back, um, which that provides great opportunity for you to get all those families back into your center. Yeah. And, and one last thing I want to say when it comes to pricing is don't be scared to put what you think your worth is. You know, if you're putting all this time and you're making it look really nice, sometimes I know myself, I would question and be like, man, this kind of sounds like a lot, the price I'm thinking. But then you tell the customer and they're like, oh, okay, that's fine. That works. You know, because if they know they're getting, you know, this great experience the price isn't going to matter. You know, I'm not saying overpriced, but you know what I'm saying? Make sure you're getting what you put into it. 
And and you have enough opportunity to do things to, you know, and as we said before, you want it to be an experience. You want it to be an experience for everybody that attends, even the ones that are just coming to watch. Uh, they should feel included in the experience. And, you know, simple things like turning a corner of the bowling center into a little photo op you know, where they can go and you have all these little fun, you know, dollar general, dollar tree, little props, sunglasses and mustaches and even little cardboard cutouts that said, you know, I had a ball at and the name of the center. Those are fun. It's a lot of fun. And it also provides an opportunity for social media. You know, people will post those pictures on their social media and that's, you know, ask them to hashtag the center. It's good publicity for you. No, so. I think it's a, uh, we packed in a lot, so you might have to listen to the episode <laughs> a few times to get everything. Cause we, we wanted to pack in as much as we could and we could go on probably for uh, much longer if we had the time, but yeah, absolutely. And, and orally, this is the time once labor day happens and the kids get back in school, this is the time you need to start planning those things. Now don't wait for those centers to ju- or those, uh, companies to just walk through the door. You need to have a dedicated program in place to reach out and start aggressively marketing your holiday parties. And the first step in that is have your well thought out party programs, your well thought out corporate menu, make sure you can present them and execute them properly and they're priced properly and then start going to town. Yeah. And this might be your, this might be your big thing, you know, um, you know, some centers I know, in certain areas will be like, you know, our, you know, our winters are kind of slow, but our summers where we make all our money or our summers are really where we make our money, but our winter, you know, what either way, this could be your big thing. Maybe it's like, man, from October to January, we are slammed with corporate parties. This might be something, a great opportunity for your center. So yeah, if you're not doing it yet, get a plan together, start reaching out to people and get those corporate parties going. Absolutely. And you really want to have the months of November, December, and and there's a lot of carryover in the month of January. So you have an opportunity for three months of great revenue, but you got to start planning now. Even give them an incentive, book early and get a, you know, a slight discount on, on the activities only, not food and beverage typically, but, you know, give them an incentive to go on and get it put, put in, you know, on the books. So, uh, yeah, now now's definitely the time. Don't don't wait too much longer. You're gonna you're gonna miss the boat. Right. <laughs> well, Orly, this is really I think um, going to be a helpful episode. I hope that um, this sparks uh, a lot of thoughts for our listeners and and that uh, they decide to go out today and start working on on a, a holiday party program. So, listeners, thank you so much for joining us today. We look forward each week um, for another episode of of Seeds of Success. Our goal is to equip you with more practical tips, ideas, and trends that will help your center grow and achieve new levels of success. We hope you share this podcast with your entire team. The more seeds you plant, the bigger the crop. Until next time, listeners, keep growing your business one happy customer at a time.